this is your bell ringer, and you are to tell me what this is. So tell me, what is it? What are we looking at here? Matthew. Okay, we're looking at an advertisement, it appears to be, a motorcycle dealership. What else are we looking at? Yes, ma'am. Is it false advertisement? I don't know. Why? Whoops. Whoops. Those black models. Three years. Okay. Um, I think they're referring to the APR, the annual percentage rate of the loan that you would take. Okay. Um, you get up to $1,000 customer cash on select models. So the on select models is small here, but it's still there. It's telling you that um, the offer is there. What else? What, are, what do we see about this um, that we know about a little bit about um, contracts? How does this apply? Is this a contract, Matthew? Okay, so this is this an offer? Okay, this is an offer. Right, they're offering what? Okay, so what is that called? That what is that the motorcycle called in a contract? In this contract, what would the element be? We have a word for it. It is in the book. Tyler, it's um, we have a specific word, an element of contract, not merchandise. But an element of contract, the thing of value that's being exchanged, what is that called? The thing of value that is being exchanged. Very first page of chapter six. One, one oh nine, one oh eight. The thing of value that's being transacted. This is consideration. The motorcycle is consideration. What is the other what is the opposite side of the consideration here? The motorcycle in, in exchange for what? For money, okay? In this contract that we are, we are um, looking at, this offer, they're saying we'll give you the motorcycle in exchange for, I don't, it doesn't spe specify how much the motorcycle will, will cost, okay? But they're not saying the motorcycle in, in exchange for you lo mowing my lawn for 25 years, okay? It's not in exchange for a service. It is a... a um, Motorcycle in exchange for an amount of money. Okay, so this is a contract. Are there explicit terms here? Are there well-stated terms? Yes, okay. The terms are listed out here pretty clearly. Okay, do we have acceptance? Are you going to buy it? I'm not buying it. Okay, so we have an offer here. We don't yet have acceptance. Ethan takes this to um, the dealership and says, I want this motorcycle. We then have acceptance, okay? So we don't have a valid contract yet. We just have an offer. All right. So our essential question for this, uh, sesh, this um, lesson is what are the requirements of an offer? In order for it to be a valid offer, 
What are the requirements? Okay. So what's your verdict here? This is on page 110, I think. So flip over one. Yeah. Somebody want to read that for me, please? Yes, please. Nice and loud. What do you think? Okay, was there was there a an offer made here? Yes, so what we just discussed. Okay, so there is an offer here. All right, now did they do anything wrong by selling the seven or the five cruisers that they had? Okay, no, they didn't do anything wrong, not, not that we know of. What about the seven people that came in after once the cruisers were gone? Do they owe them a $35,000 cruiser? Why? They came in later. Not, they came in the same day, but the other ones were already gone. Yes. Okay, it, it is good business practice to be as specific as possible. Okay, and somewhere on the ad, somehow, while supplies last or first come, first serve, something like that, would have been good business practice. Okay, but we did indeed have a, an advertisement, um, an offer here. Okay, so an offer is a proposal by an offeror to do something. Remember, the offeror is the person that is making the offer. The offeror is taking it and, and, and extending the offer. The offeree is the person who is receiving the offer. Okay? Kiera, are you interested in buying my pen? I am the offeror. Okay. Will you buy my pen for $10? Okay. We have an offer. I've made my offer. Okay. We have, um, and then we'll talk about the, uh, the other elements that are required. Kiera, I was the offeror. Kiera is the offeree. Okay. So there's three tests. Contractual intent must be present. Okay. When I said to Kiera, do you want this pen? Okay. For $10, will you buy my pen? Did I sound serious? Kiera, would you like to buy my pen for $10? Okay. Um, you have to have a serious intent. Okay. It must be communicated to the offeree. If I sat over here and said, I really want to sell this pen, but I just don't know how to tell her. Okay, if I'm not going to communicate it, it's not really, it can't happen. Okay, it must be communicated. Now, I could write her a letter. I could send her an email. I could put it on Facebook. Okay, I could do a lot of ways, a lot, or a lot of ways to communicate this to her, but I have to let her know. And then the essential terms of the offer must be complete and definite. If I just said, do you want to buy my pen, okay, is that a complete offer? Sure, if she said, yeah, I want to buy your pen, I said, great, that'll be $1,000. Okay, we have to specify what the terms of the offer are going to be. Okay, so that is what makes up an offer. Contractual intent must be present. Um, the terms are the the offer must be communicated, and the essential terms of the offer must be complete and definite. Yes, ma'am. No. No, it's not. It's not valid then. Okay. Um, I just this morning was talking to Mr. Bridgehouse about the new computers that I wanted to purchase. Okay, so I wrote it all up and I sent out an email and I said, I'd like to purchase these computers. This is the price I'd like to pay. And so I'm waiting for my response. Now, 
funny, funny story. I never sent that email. It was in my draft folder. So did I communicate it to the uh, offeree? No. Okay. I thought I did, but I didn't. So I, therefore, it is not an actual offer. I was, I was serious, okay, and I did have terms, but I had not communicated it. All right. Wording is key here. All right. So when we have um, a question about whether or not there was um, intent or whether or not the terms were definite, we always go back to that reasonable person standard. Okay. Would a reasonable person think I was serious if I offered um, to sell this pen to Kira for ten dollars? I mean, it might not be. It might not be a good deal for Kiara, but I could very, very seriously offer this pen. Okay, if I offered to sell my car for ten dollars, okay, would that be reasonable? Would you think she's probably serious? No, because even if it was a junker, it's still worth more than ten dollars. Okay, so wording is key. Um, all right, contractual intent must be present. The words themselves may indicate an offer, but the reasonable person might disregard them, exactly what I just said, because of facts and circumstances. Has anybody seen this movie? This movie right here, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you, are you familiar with the scene where Clark, the, uh, the dad, Chevy Chase, says, one last uh, minute Christmas gift would be having my boss here, Mr. Shirley, with a big ribbon on his head. Okay? And... Eddie, Cousin Eddie, this is Cousin Eddie, goes and takes him seriously and drives his RV and goes into the house and gets him and kidnaps him and brings him back and puts a bow on him. Okay? So in this case, the suggestion was made by Clark. Okay? He was not serious. A reasonable person would not have said, I think I'll go out and get um, the boss and bring him back here with a bow on his head. Okay? Now, in this case, Cousin Eddie is not reasonable. So he did it. He followed through with the, um, with the, whatever, the, the kidnapping. Okay, but this is an idea of a lack of contractual intent. Okay, you might say something, but you don't necessarily mean it. I would give a thousand dollars for something to eat right now. Okay, and if Tyler runs out and gets me a Pop-Tart, do I have to give him a thousand dollars? Okay, no. <laughs> no, there's a lack of contractual intent. <laughs> it would have to be a thousand dollars worth of pop tarts. All right. So, jest is one of the uh, one of the pro one of the issues with um, contractual intent. Okay, the appearance of the action rather than the actual intent is what's considered by the law. So, would a reasonable person think the offer is serious? Okay, I'll give my car to the first person who finds me a piece of gum. Again, it's just it, it, I made the offer in jest. If you actually come and give me a piece of gum, I'm not going to hand you the keys to my vehicle. Um, so therefore, because it's not serious, it wouldn't hold up in a court of law. Okay. And then the same thing about statements made in anger. Okay. Um, if they don't have a reasoned basis, the offer is not enforceable. Okay. Stop that girl. I'll give $100 to the person who stops her. And somebody full form tackles her and drags her back by her hair. I'm not, I'm not contractually bound to give $100 to that person. Okay, the offer was made in anger or, um, I guess, in fear. Same thing in offers in fear. Okay, so it has to be reasonable before it can be valid. All right, so preliminary negotiations. This is when you start the bargaining process. You initiate the bargaining process and you say, would you pay $100 for this pen? And Tyler says, uh, no, but I'd probably buy it for a dollar. And then we move on to a contract place. Okay. If I said, would you pay a hundred dollars for this pen? And Tyler says, yes. Um, I still have not actually extended the offer. I've just initiated that. So I'm not contractually bound to give Tyler the pen yet. Okay. It's a lot of legalese, but. Um, and obviously, you know, if we're talking about markers and pens, that's not so serious. When we talk about big purchase items, big, uh, big ticket items, cars and, and vacation homes and, you know, luxury items, that kind of thing, we get a little more serious. Would you pay $800 for my laptop? Okay, if you 
if you said no, but I'd, I'd pay 400, then, then I have an, an invitation to, this is like a bargaining, a negotiation. Okay. Uh, they're not offers. Putting signs on merchandise with a certain price, okay, or putting ads in the, in the newspaper, all of it's the same effect. So in, in our What's Your Verdict, Anchors Away was not bound by the contract to the seven buyers who came after. Okay, so just because they had said we have these um, boats that are $35,000 um, and they're, you know, a bargain price, okay, but the boats were gone, Anchors Away is not bound to still find them a boat at that price, okay? They are not contractually bound. They were just offering, they were just um, creating an invitation to negotiate, okay? Do you guys understand that? Okay, flip the paper over, over then and write me an example, just a brief example of a valid offer that shows contractual intent, um, specific um, terms, and yeah, I'll put it back here. There you go and communication, okay? Write it out so that we have all three uh, tests of an offer being met. Okay, are we ready? We have some offers to discuss here. Somebody want to volunteer their offer? Matthew? We have an offer for the laptop for $650 on Okay, Jen? Jen? Jim offers her laptop for $660, so we have um, contractual intent because the laptop, that's a valid, it's a pretty safe, um, you know, price. The laptop is our consideration there. Um, the offer is communicated in some way. How? How is the offer communicated? Are they standing in person? Yes. They're standing in, they, they offer it in person, okay. And then um, the essential terms, they, they said a money, okay, a money, a dollar amount, so good. All right, somebody else want to give me their offer? Well, um, this guy, he wants, he's offering you the dog. A dog? Yeah. And so, um, the little boy wants the dog, and so he gets his mom and asks how much do the dog cost, and he says for 600 Okay. So that's good. Okay. So the the offer is is happening in person. Yeah. Okay. The um the contractual intent is that the man is selling his his dogs. He has a price, so we have essential terms, and the communication is when the woman um, inquires about the dog, and finds out that they are in fact six hundred dollars. Okay. That works. Anybody else want to volunteer their contract? I only hope kneecaps are involved. <laughs> Kiara shattered her kneecaps. Feeling hopeless and just about to give up, she had an idea. She emailed the nearest surgeon at the hospital, and soon he replied back. In the email, he stated, Hello, Kiara. Previously, you notified me of your accident. I am a surgeon with 15 years of experience and the hospital is nearby. The surgery will cost a mere $500. Please, if you will, call me at 555-555. Thank you, and I hope to hear from you soon. But there was only six numbers in that phone number. Okay. Um, okay, very good. So the, if the offer is, um, the contractual intent is there. Okay, um, now $500 for a surgery, I don't know if that's exactly how it all shakes down there in a hospital, but um, apparently when your kneecap is damaged, you're willing to do anything. Um, the communication occurred in an email, which is very good, and the essential terms are, are there, and they are stated. Okay, very good. So I think we're getting the idea here. All right, contractual intent. Um, now, oops. Okay, social agreement. 
Um, social agreements, when two friends agree to go to the movie together and one breaks the date, there is no violation of the contract because why? Not necessarily about the time. What is it? What is um, lacking here? Yes. No, it's not proof of contract with with writing. What is it? Very good. There is no legal consideration here. Okay, so there's just maybe me being rude, but uh, now if you enter it into and say, um, uh, let's see here. I've seen it done where there is a wedding planned, where there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars invested in this wedding, and one party breaks the contract. Okay, especially if there's there, they can put those things in writing. One party breaks that contract, they could potentially be held legally responsible. I think Kim Kardashian might have with that 72-day marriage. I believe she had was in breach of a contract at, at some point there. What was his name? Chris Humphreys. Um, so anyway, the social agreements can occasionally be if they've been written up in a certain way, um, but in general. Okay, if someone doesn't, you know, decides not to go to the movies or go out to dinner with you, um, there is no violation of a contract there. Okay, so the uh, assignment was 113, answers 1 to 9. You guys have actually already done this, so we'll come back to it then. You'll, you'll have um, an, a chance later. All right, so we're moving on to termination of offers. How can offers be ended? Okay, so the, that is our essential question here. Okay, we have... 113. Yeah, you did. I thought you did. 113. Um, all right. Revocation. That is the right to withdraw an offer before it is accepted. Okay. So in our what's your verdict, okay, anchors away. Oh, that's the wrong what's your verdict. Um, let's read what's your verdict and figure out on page one. Um, 114. Somebody read what's your verdict for me, please. Who wants to read what's your verdict? Melissa Matthews. On May 15th, Melissa offered to sell her collection of baseball cards for $3,000 at any time before the first of the next month to her friend and fellow collector, Raul. While Raul was trying to raise the money, Melissa had second thoughts. She called Raul and said, I've changed my mind. I'm not interested in selling the cards. Raul responded, it's too late. You said the two offer would be open for this full month. This is just the 20th, and I've got the money, so I accept. Okay, so is that true? Is Melissa required, then, to sell her baseball cards to Raul because she opened up the offer for the whole month? Matthew says yes. But I'm telling you no, because revocation says you can withdraw the offer, the offeror can withdraw the offer, okay, before it's accepted. Yes, sir. No, only if he accepted it. Okay, it only becomes a contract if it's been accepted and the, the tender has been exchanged. Okay, you are able to withdraw the offer. So, for example, this morning on Facebook, there are 10 uh, cute, fuzzy, adorable, lovey, scoopy puppies, golden retriever puppies, and they're too, too cute, and they're $500 each. Okay, and so I, they're online, okay, I send the thing to my, my husband, and I say, I think I want one of these puppies, and I am, you know, when he sends it, she shows it to the kids, and we all get excited, and, you know, we get the money together. And then I call her, and I say, we're interested in puppy, you know, A. And she says, oh, unfortunately, my daughter fell in love with puppy A, and puppy A is no longer available. Okay? I, I have no claim. I can't say, but I want puppy A, so you have to give it to me. I'll sue you. I can't do that. Okay? 
the offer has been revoked by her. Now, if I say, hi, I'm you know, calling because I want puppy A, and I give her the money, and she says, okay, when they're ready to go, it'll be six weeks from now, when they're ready to, um, to go, you know, be away from their mom, then we'll give you a call, and then six weeks later, she has my money, we have the contract in place, and she says, unfortunately, my daughter really fell in love with the puppy, and so I'm sorry, here's your money back. Then I can say, no dice, fork over the dog. Even if she gave me my money back. I mean, I can take her to court, I should say. She gets to keep the money if I get the dog. But I, I, have, a, I have a legitimate right to take her to court if she is in breach of that contract by not giving me that dog. Do you understand? Okay, so I, I can revoke the offer. She can revoke the offer before it, there is an acceptance. Okay, even though um, that that open date was there, it was kind of pending. Okay, there is no end date to some contracts. In a sense, it's a reasonable amount of time. But if they revoke the offer before there is acceptance, then it is what it is. Okay, which is why if you are interested in an offer, if you're interested in accepting, you must do so moderately quickly okay okay so Melissa revoked the offer there was uh, Raul was you know out of luck on the baseball cards okay um, oh there it was revocation all right um, so time stated in the offer the offer may state how and when the offer must be accepted okay the example here is the bank sent a letter to Boggs who had applied for a loan in the, the letter, they said that the acceptance had to be in writing, and it had to be no later than October 18th. Okay, so they need, the Boggs guy needed to accept the offer by the 18th in writing. Okay, so it's very specific. Boggs mailed the letter on the 17th. So he put it in the mailbox on the 17th, but it didn't get there until the 20th. He's out of luck because it specifies here that it has to be received no later than the October 18th, okay? If my computer situation that I, t I told you about today, I wrote it all up, I had it all ready to go, I just never sent it. So if I sent it at a later point and said, but look, I was ready, I could even prove when I wrote it, doesn't matter. It was not communicated um, in the right way by the right time, okay? So um, in business practice, it's always smart to be very specific and adhere to the very specific um, terms of the contract. Okay, and a lot of times when we're dealing with snail mail, which means it's actual physical mail in the mailbox, um, it is best to say um, postmarked by rather than received by. Okay, because you don't know when they'll receive it. Um, another example is that there was, um, we're doing a, a collection with one of my kids' sports organizations, and the guy who's in charge of the, the uh, P.O. box forgot to go and check it. So there were all these checks sitting in the P.O. box waiting to be cashed for almost two months. Some of the people who had written those checks canceled the checks because they had been there for so long. Okay, So there, were, there was a reasonable expectation that those checks would have been received by, um, you know, by, in the mail, and they were not received. They were delivered to the P.O. box, but they were not received. And therefore, uh, we can't go back after them and say, but you promised. The expectation was that, you know, three days, three business days in the mail, and you received the item. Okay. Um, hello. All right, so a reasonable length of time. If no time is, is specified, okay, a reasonable length of time must be understood. And again, we go back to that reasonable person standard, okay, when the offer would be terminated. So this example is if the offeree was a produce um, supplier from New Jersey, or that should be offeror, who was selling tomatoes, okay? So I have all these tomatoes, a, a truckload of tomatoes, and I want to know if you, Matthew, in Florida are interested in them. Okay, and if you're not, I'm going to try and sell them to Kiara, and if Kiara is not interested in them, I'm going to try and sell them to Tyler. Because if I don't sell them, guess what happens to the tomatoes? They rot. Okay, so I need to know 
I need to know within an hour if you want me to ship them, okay? That is a reasonable expectation. You have to tell me quickly so that I can find another buyer for those tomatoes. Otherwise, they will rot and I will be stuck with a truckload of rotten tomatoes, which is good for nothing except for throwing at people, okay? So um, that is a reasonable expectation in this case. Now, if we're talking about a truckload of vehicles, do we have a little more time? Sure. Okay, now we do, do we have two years to decide? No. We have maybe a, a week. Okay, we have a re, there's a reasonable expectation of time. If we're talking about a, um, what's it called? Um, no, not a balloon. Artwork, some kind of famous artwork. Um, then perhaps we have more time because it's already withstood the test of time and we have more time to, to deal with it. Okay, so the time of the expected acceptance should be listed as good business practice. It is smart to always write it down, okay? Whenever there is a contract that you are involved in writing, you want to have it written down. Now, if you're not the one writing the contract, if you're the one accepting it, you want to say, so when do you want me to tell you by? When do I need to, to, to let you know? You want to be very specific so that you are protected in this contract, okay? Rejection by the offeree. This is the next way that offers can come to an end. When the offeree says, nah, done. The offer's over, okay? Will you go to the prom with me? Uh, no. That's done, okay? It is terminated. Now, a counteroffer is also a way that the offer is terminated, okay? But a counteroffer keeps it alive, okay? So the original offer is dead, okay? But the soul of it, the meat of it is still, is still kind of bubbling and we, we move it on, all right? This says the, um, it's created when the offeree changes the terms in an important way and sends it back to the offeror, okay? So, in this example, will you go to the prom with me? And she says, um, no, but I'll go to the movies, okay? Then she becomes what? She becomes the offerer. And he has an opportunity to say, um, gross, okay? So he has an opportunity then as the offeree to terminate that. But that's a counter offer, okay? In this example here, it says, while I'm not going to let you telecommute to make you feel more, home, more at home, I'll bring in screaming kids and dogs. So they are, they are terminating that offer of telecommunication, working from home, but they're saying, here's what we'll give you instead. They're providing a counteroffer. Okay, and this example here, this is called draw the law. This is something you guys will be doing later. Okay, we have this blue guy. He's the offeror. Okay, he is extending an offer to the red guy. Okay, this, this O with the slash through, that means the offer is not accepted. Okay, and then we drop down, but he's going to make a counter offer. So he's now blue. He's now the offeror. And he's going to shoot it over to this guy who's now the offeree, and then we can decide whether or not he's going to accept it. Okay, that is counter offer. That is the, the third way that an offer can come to an end. Okay, so, so far we have, just to be clear, clear here, we have revocation, okay, we have um, rejection, and we have counteroffer. Lastly, we have death or insanity, okay? The contract must be voluntarily entered into by the parties, both parties, okay? It has to be under their control. If I'm dead, I'm no longer in charge of that. Therefore, the offer dies with me, okay? So, I say... Matthew, I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm willing to sell you my beach house for, you know, $5,200. It's a really good deal. Okay, Matthew's super excited, and then I walk out in front of a bus and I die. And Matthew goes to my funeral and says to my husband, hey, she offered me the beach house for $5,200, and I'd really still like to buy that. Okay, and my husband would say, no, not only is she dead, but she was crazy, and that's why she offered that to you.
Okay? Death or insanity, it eliminates the control. The law terminates the offer. There is no offer. Okay? All right. And then lastly, the destruction of this specific subject matter. If it is a unique item, so a baseball card, jewelry, antique furniture, property, okay, um, but something that cannot be replaced. Now, you're not going to maybe like this, but if my example of the dog situation, remember I said I wanted that dog A, okay, and then she later on says dog A is actually sold, but I have dog C, which is almost the same. Okay, it's still female, it's still a whatever, same size, same height, same color, okay? It, that would be a legitimate substitution because I don't know those dogs yet. They're not my dogs yet. So therefore, um, but if, if it was a baseball card, you know, you couldn't say a Babe Ruth rookie card could be traded with a, help me out here, Kurt Schilling. Okay, it wouldn't be an even trade. If a Babe Ruth rookie card is destroyed, it is a it is a very specific subject matter, okay, or a piece of jewelry or something. Um, the offer is then terminated, and no one is bound to replace it. Okay, do you understand? Do you understand? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, how can the offer be kept open? Okay. There are two ways that the offer is kept open. Okay. If the offeree gives the offeror something of value in return, it's kept open. Okay. The offer cannot be withdrawn during the, this period of option. All right. So here is the offer. I could give a deposit or some kind of uh, this isn't a, a great example, but with the offer of, of the dogs, okay, I could say I'm not going to give you all the money up front. I'm going to give you a deposit, and then we'll keep that option open so that I can buy that dog later on if I decide that I want it, you know, in a, in a week from now or in a month from now or whatever, okay? And then, and Matthew, that would be what you were saying about the extended, um, you know, that open end. If he had given her any kind of deposit, to hold the offer, then he then then Melissa would have been bound to that baseball card offer. Okay, so that's option. The second one is a firm offer. Okay, this is a written offer um, that as a term stating how long it is to stay open. Okay, um, in our example with the baseball card, it was not a written offer; it was an oral offer. It was orally stated that it would be open for a month. Okay, if we get it in writing, then we have a firm offer. And in this um, thing, it says, internship applications, the line forms here, a bear lawyer makes a firm offer, and then he eats them, something like that. Anyway, um, so that is a firm offer. Those are the two ways that a contract can stay open. Okay, we have option, and we have firm offer. All right, your assignment is page 117. It is 1 to 14. Um, answers only. Print it or hand it in, hard copy when you're finished, and submit it to Schoology so that I have, to Schoology, so that I have your, uh, the date specified of when you turned it in, okay? This is all for, for quarter four, all right? If you've not already done uh, page 113, you want to do that now, that chapter six, uh, section six one, um, but this is your second, this is uh, page 117, one to 14. Answers only. Um, and print or turn in hard copy. Questions? Comments? Okay. Um, we'll do a ticket out the door in the last five minutes of class, and we will answer the essential questions from today's lesson.